Big disclaimer, this is not what you're used to. <laughs> it was just an experiment gone right in the studio. I was trying to make a movie here. He wants to make a movie, you know, he wants me to come out of the character. I told him I'm just a producer, I can't. I'm, at, I'm featured on the song, but come on, man, I can't. I can, this is my debut acting, I guess, holding dogs, jumping off buildings, swimming in pools, I don't know. Timberland and I were just kind of like going back and forth on different ideas. I was trying to come up with a different way to hear myself. We came up with this with this beat that was seemed like hip hop on acid. You put it on, you say it's kind of a dance beat. Then his lyrics come on, you think, man, this is he's going through a. Uh, it's like distortion, like Trent Reznor. This is crazy. Get your sexy I wanted to take more of a rock approach to kind of singing the vocal. I'm bringing sexy back. The mother don't know how to act. I got with the engineer, Jimmy Douglas, and we started messing around with different ways to, to do my vocal, and we figured out putting my vocal through a guitar amp. We actually recorded it like that. You know, sometimes you record the vocal and then you mess with it afterwards, but I actually recorded the vocal with the effect on it. I'll let you whip me if I misbehave. The music to me is, I, I really like this song a lot. I think it's really a cool piece. I don't really consider collaborating just a collaboration. I consider, consider it magic, and you know, you can't deny that. The people that I've played it for so far are people that know me. You know, that are friends that, you know, it takes them a second to actually realize that's me singing when, I, when you first come in, which I like. You know, I think the song is a different approach. Um, I wanted to work with someone who would take a different approach as well. You know, it's my first time to try new things with music, first time to work with Michael. You know, why not? If you're going to kind of take chances, you can't really take half ass chances. Barcelona was a, is the right decision because there's two things you need is you needed uh, progressive architecture to handle this club scene which is going to be slightly um, uh, futuristic and Barcelona is, has always been very cutting edge in its architecture and its design and at the same time you wanted an old European city, an old European feel so those locations were definitely there. We're shooting here in Barcelona and it was something that Michael was sort of adamant about. The video itself just has a different look, you know, based on what I've already seen. Just got, I mean, I think it, it also helped shooting here in Barcelona. Even the interior stuff, I mean, the exterior stuff, the exterior shots are obvious for shooting in Barcelona, but even the interior, it's got a different vibe to it. And I don't know if we could have created that in New York or Los Angeles, so to speak, because Every city's different, you know, every country's different. Well, the concept of the video, I mean, I've gone through a different ideas for how do you treat this video, and I think when I met with, with Michael Houseman, he immediately understood what I was going for. I was sitting with Justin, we first met, and he started telling me all, a bunch of words, a bunch, I shouldn't say words, they were ideas, that he had that weren't, that aren't flush out storylines, they're just that. In other words, he was saying, I like, you know, something future, yet something gritty, something like that, yet something like that. And he just started putting this together. And then I heard the song, and it was that. I thought, wow, what if we meet a guy, but he's not who he appears to be? His work speaks for itself, you know, with what he's done for, for you know, he did Jesus Walks for Kanye, which was an amazing video, and he also, one of my favorite, one of my favorite Madonna videos, Take a Bow. He's not clouded, he knows what he wants and he also knows what he likes. And so, it's not, Justin doesn't sit down and tell you the idea of the story, but once you present a story, he's got ideas for that. When he started throwing references back to me and the way, you know, he really, he heard the, the sort of rock influence of this genre. There's a, a, Span a, a beautiful Spanish actress, Elena Anaya, who's playing sort of the hero girl. And um, 
She's not sexy at all. Obviously, there's a lure to her. She was a wonderful actress. You needed someone to be just as great an actress as Justin is an actor, because he's phenomenal as an actor. To me, it's just great. And her, she's great. She's the believability. One of my favorite films ever was called Sex and Lucia. And I think a lot of people know this, and, and that kind of broke her. In Spain, it was a very big film. It's not just getting a sexy model, that, which loses all the sexuality if she doesn't entice. And Elena, in that club, looks elegant, but there's, in her eyes, there's something dark. And behind the scenes with her, too, you know, there's nothing greater than this girl takes off her shirt, and there's a gun tucked in the back of her skirt. You know what I mean? It's like, whoa, that's interesting. It's a big pleasure to be here. And I, I, I love his music, but this song, I think, is absolutely fantastic. And it's going to be around the world, around the planet. It's definitely been an interesting process making this record because I think people were curious but I don't think anybody had an expectation because there was nothing to compare it to. But I think this time I think there is an expectation and I think the expectation is just, you know, hopefully the expectation is, is good music. I mean, that, that's all you can really ask for but also at the end of the day it's like if you're not happy with how it sounds you should keep working on it. You know, because it has to be a representation of where you are at right now. The basic premise is there's two storylines happening. And the, the one storyline, which I call the anchor, is kind of set in a club that could be, could be in the future, but it's not pushing it too hard, but it's very uh, progressive. And it's a guy, Justin, following this lady who he's obviously intrigued by. And there's a pulse of light that kind of always accompanies the club and her. And he never quite gets to her. Every time he's about to her, she's gone. And there's an interest in it. That's the anchor of it. Then there's a second storyline happening, which at the end, hopefully, we're going to question which one happened first. The second storyline is the same guy that you see in the club, and the same girl you see in the club, you see in two separate hotel rooms. And you start to discover both of them are spy or assassins. I look at albums as books. You know, if I'm an author, this is my book. This is the statement I want to make right now. It's not my last statement. It's not, you know, it's, it's, it's where we are right now. And I think that if you do that, then I think you'll get the truest and best quality of, of, of what it is that you're doing. If I was going to direct a video myself, which I'm not equipped at all to do that, <laughs> but if I was going to reference ideas, I would reference Kubrick, but I'd also reference like Spielberg Munich. You know what I mean? Like it's got a cinematic feel to it, but it's also got this sinister vibe to it. I hate having to describe your own music. You're like, just listen to it. You might like it, you might not. <laughs> Okay, so here we are, we're setting up the bathroom set, which has uh, Justin walking through, following the girl, seeing lots of unusual goings on and people in our bathroom here. Um, and we're setting up now, we're going to shoot soon. We're in Barcelona, that's where we are. No, we're, we're in Barcelona at the uh, video shoot. The video shoot. It is a new sound for me, and I think it's a new sound, period. I, I don't think you can have a conscious effort to go in the studio and say, hey, well, let's create something new. I think everybody wants to create something new. Tim and I just, you know, I mean, obviously we clicked before on the first record with Crimea River, and we knew we wanted to work together again. And we worked for four days together on my last record. 
you know, let's, you know, let's see what happens if we actually work on a whole project together. And I feel like we have more than just Crimea River. We have several Crimea Rivers on this album. One or two or three, at least three. There really wasn't a conscious effort. We just, I just got in the studio, we did one song, and we said, wow, this is amazing. We did another song, and he said, wow, this is great, you know, and we just kept going. I think our first goal was like six songs. Like, let's see if we can do six consistent Crimea Rivers. And we ended up doing, you know, 10 songs. When you co-produce with sort of the same people in the same camp, you get a continuity to the sound because you know where you just went. So you know how far you can go the next song and also keep it sort of in, keep them in the same ballpark. We had planned to do it live. And when we saw it live, it was like, it was like a mountaineer. It was like not what I envisioned. It was a tough stunt. It's not the stunt man's fault, but it was, you know, to do it live, him to jump on these balconies and balance on the balconies and everything, and the wires that they set up wasn't what we were looking for. So we immediately shifted to doing a green screen. This is more of a movie than any music video I've seen. And I say movie because it's really not reliant on a performance. The performance in it is him kind of narrating, being a storyteller for the story. Justin's character and Elena's character, I see them as two assassins in competition. And I think they're in town, and the town is kind of, you know, we, we have led on to make it even suspicious, unless you really know Barcelona, it's a European town, and you don't know which one. So they're there, and I think that they are on the same assignment. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a film, and that's, that's the challenge for this one, is to try to make those two storylines cohesive and work. Well, Tim is a big part of the song, and he's gonna be in the video, uh, so I'm obviously excited about that. He's our way out. Did he do it? So he's in the hallway in between these two, kind of, is he working for the girl or is he on his own? That's a gray area. I'm supposed to be the pimp of all pimps. You don't know if I'm friend or foe, and I can't tell you what I am, but they're my dogs, and they will tear you up if you mess up. Danny and Bimba, they don't play. <laughs> I have to say that kissing him was cool. <laughs> I don't know specifically how people are going to react. Um, I know how people have been reacting, and you know, I mean, at, at the end of the day, it's it's a dance record. You know, at the end of the day, it's like. Hip hop, house, rock, and and dance all in the same song. You know, um, if it gives people that feeling, then then that's what it does. You know, um, I can't really take credit for how it makes people feel. That's that's up to them. I mean, I think that the mission is 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 for people when they listen to it to feel sexy. You know, and and when they listen to it to maybe feel halfway violent. You know what I mean? I mean, that's art. That's that's what it's supposed to do. It's just supposed to evoke. I think if you sit in a studio and you try to create what you think people expect of you, then you're, you know, then you're really not using your platform. You're not using your voice. I think there's a certain amount of people, there's a handful of people in the world who have a voice and you can use it to influence people and you never I've never heard of anybody influencing people by sort of doing what they what they sort of expected of them if you're in my position so to speak and I say this in the most humble way you know what I mean if you're in my position and you're not pushing it you're not pushing people to listen to something different you're not pushing them to look at something different you're not pushing them to feel something different then really, what are you doing? You know, I mean, I don't want to follow the crowd. <laughs>